Hi guys, Bruce here. Well, it's the first victim of the year. Um, we've had a heck of a spring, so no, nothing has been coming in. I've been working on my own stuff. And now we have a self-propel Craftsman 6.75, but I call that a Briggs & Stratton 6.75. And uh, the owner just said, oh, I'm just bringing it over for a tune-up. But right off the bat, we can see there's no air cleaner cover and it looks like the carburetor's been broken or loose or something hey look at that so I think the I'm just guessing now but there's a plastic intake manifold tube that runs across the top here and I think we may have an issue with that don't know yet we'll take it apart might even have a broken carburetor so let's get it up on the on the operating table All right, I'll come back when, when we get our little workstation all working here. All right, let's start taking stuff off. Get Bob's tray, excuse me. Yes, I say excuse me to a camera. Bob from Double Wide Six, good channel. So you guys might have noticed that I never even uh, attempted to start this because that carburetor is sitting there flopping away, right? Oh, did I drop that on the floor already? Nope. <laughs> okay, this is probably a 516s right here. All the whole thing's loose. Why is that? I hope nothing's broken. All right, this should pop off. Like I said, oh yeah, one more, sorry. I always forget this third one. And of course this, the seal broke. That's no problem. I'm going to have to take a shroud off. Look at that. Oh, that's just undone itself. So it's just vibrated off. Well, that'd be good. Yeah, see? Wouldn't that be lucky? Okay. We're going to have to take the shroud off anyway, though, because uh, we have to make sure that the choke actuation lever inside here, which is really skinny tin, uh, is not broken. So let's keep going. Yeah, the whole arm is broken, eh? Oh, it's missing a bolt! <laughs> Sheesh! Guys, let me get some light. Okay. All right. So this is the carburetor, right? Linkage, choke up here. And it was mounted with two bolts. One back here. Uh, let me see if you can see that. Right there. And one right 
There, can you see that? That bolt's been sheared off. Right there. Perfect. So we are gonna do a carb clean on this guy anyway, because it's been running without an air filter. So we might as well just uh, clamp the line. Clamp! It'll drip a little fuel. And then we take off the throttle linkage, and that's it. That's going in a tray. And now we're going to try and get that bolt out. Are you with me? So, right there, see if I can stabilize this on the table. Stable on the table. Before you go get, getting crazy on, uh, you know, getting easy outs and drilling out stuff, this is pretty thin stuff. We might just be able to grab the head of that bolt right, where are we, right there. And we might just be able to turn that out. No, it's not going to come. <laughs> Me and my wishful thinking. Hmm. Well, I was just going to grab it with a pair of pliers, but I might have to grab it with a pair of ice grips. What's really on there? So now, next step is a good set of vice grips, right? And when I mean vice grips, I mean vice grips, not C I C H I N A. I think it's going to come. Something gave. Oh, it's not coming easy though. See if I can just turn it out now. Hardy hire matey, this is the entire source of our problem right there. Shroud off to make sure that this plastic aluminum intake is not broken because it does seem to have a little bit of slack in it, eh? Right there. So the gas gets uh, vaporized, or you know what I mean, by the carburetor, and then the, the fumes shoot into here and they come all the way across and down into the intake valve. Okay, guys, so now we're going to disconnect this gas tank, which is three bolts. Top, All I'm doing is taking the shroud off so that I can uh, see if this intake manifold is okay on the choke, by the choke. Alright, this should just tilt back. Lovely. Okay, now we're going to take the shroud off. Oh, and I'll have to, there's four bolts holding the shroud on. Shroud, rewind, dipstick. Kills me when I drop something. It always falls into the hardest to reach place. Oops. Okay. You don't want to hear your doctor say oops. Now this should just pull off. Just like that. Good. 
Now we're going to have a close look. Well, it's loose. I'll show you that right now. So this tube right here goes all the way across and into here. And if I wiggle this end, can you see that? It's just a little bit loose, but I bet you I can tighten that. And that'll be a quarter of an inch nut driver. And I think tightening it'll probably be okay. Yeah. Looks like everything's vibrated loose on this. I'm going to have to check the, uh, the balance of the blade. Maybe it's, it's vibrating a little more than it should. Eh? I think that's okay. But we're not going to... We're going to put the new carburetor on, or the clean carburetor on, before we go any further. Alright, I'll be right back. Oh, it's good. So he obviously has not used it since this happened. That's fantastic. So let me just grab my card cleaner. Don't go away. I'm just going to see if this bolt is clear. No. Nope. Yeah. This is the whole deal on these old on these Briggs is, is this bolt on the bottom. It has to be clear two directions. It's kind of a T. My can's almost out of juice here. Got to use a new can. I knew that was coming. Okay, now this should shoot up through there really good. Yep, yeah, see that? So it's up there through. Oh. And through the sent the bottom hole too. Good. So we don't have to fuss too much now. I'm gonna just give it a bath and then take it to the back door and open the door and wash it off with air. An air wash, as Donnie Boy 73 would say. So that's it, carbs clean. All right guys, just for your information, I bolted the carburetor back on to the linkage and replaced the one bolt that was broken, which was this one, I believe. Yep, that one. And I've just bolted the carburetor on, making sure that the choke, and this is the newer types of Briggs with the automatic choke, right? This heats up and that takes the choke on and off on that lever right there. See that? So it warms up, it warms up, takes the choke off, and then it cools off and takes the choke back on again. Right? I just have to get the new seal here, and we're almost ready for a test run. So before we uh, put the air cleaner on, I am going to put the shroud back down. And I did adjust this automatic choke just a little bit. You wonder when the when a bolt doesn't go all the way in easy. And the two front bolts. Are we recording? Yes, we are. I had the owner over, and I showed him what was what was wrong. It's kind of something that's almost hard to believe that a bolt would snap off, eh? Okay, that is replaced. And then we are going to put the gas tank on and reconnect the gas tank. 
gas line. I should be able to let this go. Now I'm assuming the gas is okay, but he's a he's a very uh, diligent on his maintenance. So and now we put the air cleaner on. I've got the new gasket here. There, everything's solid. Now let's put the gas tank on. I might as well check the spark plug while I've got it up on the air. Eh? We'll get it running, we'll warm it up, and I'll change the oil. Then we'll have some confidence and put the cover on, too. Three screws left. Phillips. and then the third one goes in the air filter when we're done. Alright, let's see if it goes. I guess I'm going to check the oil. Oh, that's good. <laughs> okay, let's, let's go. Enough of this fellow fooling around. So now with this automatic choke we're going to get you set right up there and you can watch it open. And it should start right up. Just change the oil. And now I'm just going to have a quick look at the belt that drive for the front wheels. And yes, I sharp. Oh my goodness! I sharpened the belt. I sharpened the blade uh, while you weren't looking. But I'm just going to take this out under the alley and blow this grass out of here, and then we'll check the belt. Be right back. All right, the blade looks great. Where the blade belt, blade belt, belt. The belt looks great. Stick the cover back on. Where'd the wet rag go? You know, these are nice machines. I'm, I'm not, I've never been a fan of the self propel. But I tell you, of all the self propellers, I like these front wheel drives the most. They seem to last a little bit longer. And uh, you don't need a thousand dollars worth of tools to work on them. A spark plug wrench. A 3 8 socket, a half inch wrench, and a couple of nut drivers which can be replaced for socket. They're just excellent, eh? So here's a brand new air filter. And with our old, oop, <laughs> just gonna blow this out.
Once again, thank you, Klaus, for that. Right on, eh? And that's a wrap. The only thing we have to do is oil the wheels and uh, start it when I put it on the ground. So I'll be right back. All right, guys. A neighbor's machine. Sunlight. Okay. That's a wrap. That's cool when they come in non-running and they leave running. <laughs>